Good afternoon to our viewers. On behalf of School of Engineering and Technology, we welcome to our students who are attending this interactive EduSet lecture session. Today's topic is Basics of Computer Graphics. This topic is from the course BME002, that is Computer Aided Design. Computer Aided Design BME002, this course is offered to our first year students of BTEC Mechanical Engineering. This course comprises of two blocks. One is Introduction to Computer and Computer Graphics and the block two is for Geometric Modeling. So this topic is from block one, that is Basics of Computer Graphics. In this lecture session, today we are going to study transformation of points and line used to create different objects which are the basics of computer graphics. Transformation play a major role in geometric modeling and viewing. So today we will see different transformation techniques which are extensively used in computer aided design. You all know that a body or an object or a plane figure is moved from one position to other position. Definitely the coordinates of endpoints of the object or body or a plane will be changed. So today we will see the relations of the resultant coordinates with the original coordinates with this lecture session. You all know that a body, if it is rotated, even though the coordinates for each and every points will change, we will also see what will be, will be the transformation when the body is rotated. And we will also study about the scaling. Scaling means the body can be enlarged, body can be reduced. So we will see the relations and different mathematical aspects on these uh, topics. Transformation can be of two types, two-dimensional and three-dimensional. It includes the following changes, move object that is translation, rotate object that is rotation and change size of object that is scaling. Let us start with two-dimensional transformation. Modeling transformations is the mechanism to compose an object from modeling primitives. The modeling primitives are defined in their own coordinate systems and then placed in the final scene by using geometric transformations. Let us start with a very simple example that is transformation, 2D transformation. Translation is a simple straight line movement of the object. So let us look at this figure. So this is one plane figure and endpoint coordinates are specified. This is x1, y1. This endpoint is x2, x4, y4 and this coordinate is x3, y3 and x2, y2. Now the, the plane figure, since we are discussing 2D translation, so we will only consider the 2D figure like triangle, rectangle, ellipse, hyperbola. So all these are 2D figure. So we will only consider the plane figures or the figures which can be drawn on a plane. Here the body was, the object was here and it is after due 
translation it has come to this final positions over here and there is a translation in x directions that is tx and there is also translation in y directions ty now let us see what should be the final coordinate systems with this 2d translation here we had already seen the figure and let us go back to the original figure and here x1 y1 is the original point so when it will shift to the new position the coordinates will change and let us the new coordinate for the original coordinate for which the coordinate was x1 y1 is x dust 1 x dust y dust 1 so in this case since we are given translation in x direction is tx so the relation between x dust and x1 will follow this simple equation that is x1 dust is equal to x1 plus tx and y1 dust is equal to y1 plus ty similarly for other points or any object such as polygon by adding this translation distances like tx and ty for each end point of the object the required translation is achieved now let us take of a very simple example and let us see how we can apply the knowledge which we have gained so far for a little dis discussion for 2D translation. So let us take a very simple problem that is consider a line AV whose, end po whose position vectors of end points are A that is 1 comma 2 that is and B the coordinate is 3.4 that means the state line AV, the coordinate of A is 1, 2 and the coordinate of B is 3.3,4. The translation in X and Y directions are, that is TX, TY are 2, 3. So we have to calculate the endpoints of the translation line. This is very simple. Let us write down the coordinate systems initial coordinate system that is x1 y1 is 1 comma 2 and x2 y2 that is 3 comma 4 since we have given translation tx and ty are the translation in x and y directions so x1 dash is equal to x1 plus tx that is equal to 3 and x2 dash is 3 plus 2 that is 5 y1 dash is initial coordinate plus translation in y direction that is 2 plus 3 that is 5 and y2 dash is y2 plus translation in y directions that is ty so y2 dash is equal to 4 plus 3 that is 7 so we have got the coordinates for the end points of the straight line finally it will look like this so let us have a pictorial view over here so this was the original line ab and coordinate for point a is 1 comma 2 and the coordinate for point b 3 comma 4 and ol is the original line so this is the original line and transformed line tl is shown over here and the new coordinates are also shown which we have got with little knowledge of mathematics that is 3 comma 5 for the point a dash and 5 comma 7 that is point b dash for the new coordinate for the point b now we had discussed about 2D translation. Now let us talk about 2D rotation. You see that this is a plane figure and if we add here there are four endpoints 1, Q, 3, 4. Now very simple case let us rotate this with respect to the origin and obviously when you rotate with some angle then the endpoint coordinates will change. So, suppose this is the original position and there, these four are the endpoints of this figure and if you rotate with some angle, definitely the coordinate of the endpoints will change. Now, you will see the relations between the coordinates for the original as well as the final for an individual point. Let us consider a case of 2D rotation through an angle phi where the coordinates x y are translated to x dash y dash. So x dash y dash are the new coordinate after rotating the, uh, the line through an angle phi. 
Note that phi is positive for a counterclockwise rotation and that rotation is about the origin 0, 0. So, here you see that rotation is about origin that is 0, 0. So, here this was the original line. The coordinate of point A is x, y and this line is making angle theta with the x directions, uh, x axis and this line is rotated through angle phi and final position is O A dashed. And let us try to find out the relations between final coordinate systems and initial coordinate for the points A and A dashed. See <coughs> here that we all know that if we take the point A whose coordinate is x comma y and if the length of the line is r and if it is making angle theta with x axis then x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta. Now for the final point a dashed, so length of the line will not change so that o a dashed is r but in this case o a dashed is making angle theta plus phi. So in this case v can write x dashed is equal to r cos theta plus phi and y dashed is equal to r sin theta plus phi. So finally, we will get this relations that is x is equal to r cos theta, y is equal to r sin theta and x dashed is the new coordinate after rotating the line through an angle phi that is r cos theta plus phi that is finally we get r cos theta cos phi minus r sin theta sin phi and y dash is equal to r sin theta cos phi plus r cos theta sin phi. But we all know that x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta. Putting the value of x equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta finally we get the equation that is x dash is equal to x cos phi minus y sin phi and y dash is equal to y cos phi plus x sin phi. So, finally we are getting the transformation matrix that is equal to cos phi sin phi minus sin phi cos phi. So, this we have written in a matrix form. So, x dash y dash is the coordinate for the point A after rotating the line through an angle theta with respect to the origin is equal to initial coordinates multiplied by the transformation matrix that is cos phi sin phi minus sin phi cos phi. So, with this technique we can easily find out the final coordinates for any point after rotating. But here we have to be very careful that while rotating the line we have to rotate the line with respect to origin. But if the any line or any object or any body is rotated with respect to any other point then we have to do a lot of transformations. So, that technique we will discuss later on. Let us first discuss about the initial aspects for this computer graphics that is translation, rotation as well as the scaling. Now, as we have already discussed that transformation matrix is equal to cos phi sin phi minus sin phi cos phi and rotations are considered positive in the directions of counter -clock clockwise about the origin. So here the rotation is being carried out with respect to the origin. But if the body is rotated with any other point then we have to do lot of transformations and that we have to discuss later on. So here the phi may be any angle. Phi may be 30 degree, 45 degree or any other angle by which the body is rotated with respect to the origin. Now, let us take up a very simple example. We are considering more and more examples because whatever the knowledge you have gained, if you apply that knowledge for solving any problem, then definitely your knowledge will be crystal clear. So, let us take a very simple problem, a triangle. Triangle is a 2D, play, a 2D object. So, a triangle ABC which has three points A, 3 comma minus 1, B, 4 comma 1 and C 2 comma 1 is rotated 
by 90 degree about the origin in counterclockwise directions calculate the position vectors of the rotated triangle this is a very interesting problem but here the the triangle is rotated with rotate, rotated by 90 degree so the angle of phi is given 90 degree so we know the transformation of rotation t is equal to this is a matrix having four elements cos phi sin phi minus sin phi cos phi but here it is given the triangle is rotated by 90 degree. So, we, we, we can very well up put the value of phi is 90 degree. Finally, we get the transformation matrix T is equal to 0, 1, minus 1, 0 because cos 90, 0 and sin 90, 1. So, we are getting this transformation matrix. Once we get the transformation matrix and multiplied by the originate coordinate, we will get the final coordinates for the end points of this triangle. So, here you see that this is the triangle and if it is rotated 90 degree, then obviously it will take the final shape over here and this is the before rotation. So, 2, 1, 4, 1, these are the end points uh, of the two points of this triangle and when you rotate this 90 degree, it will look like this. But here you see that coordinates are changing. Previously it was 2 comma 1, now it is minus 1 comma 2 after rotating 90 degree. But how we will get? We have to multiply the transformation matrix with the origin coordinate for this triangle. Here we have sent this. So using 3 by 2 matrix, so 3 comma 1 is coordinate, uh, it was the coordinate for one point of this triangle, 4 1, it was also original coordinate of one such endpoint of a triangle. So, if we multiply this with the transformation matrix, finally we get 1, 3, minus 1, 4, minus 1, 2 are the coordinates for the endpoints of the triangle after rotating it by 90 degree. We can go back to the original figure and see that minus 1, 4, 1, 3 and minus 1, 2, these are the revised or finally we get the coordinate of the endpoints of the triangle by rotating it 90 degree. Now, let us take up the scaling. Scaling alters the size of the object. Consider Sx and Sy are scaling factors in x and y directions and Sf be the overall scaling factor and then the scaling taking into account the scaling factors, the coordinates of the points x, y changes to x dashed, y dashed and x dashed is equal to x multiplied by sx and y dashed is equal to y multiplied by sy. Scaling is nothing but suppose you are holding a rubber and you are stretching it say double of this length. So, definitely the rubber will be enlarged. So, in this case the, the scaling is only in one direction, but scaling may be in two dimensions also. So, if the final scaling factor is SF. If it is greater than 1, then obviously we are, the object becomes larger. And if SF is less than 1, then the object becomes smaller. It is just like after taking the photograph, if you ask the photographer that I would like to get a passport size photo, then they will reduce it and give you a passport size photograph. But if you ask them that please give me some large view, so definitely the scaling factor will be more, more than one. So you will get double size or triple size of the original photograph. Now if Sx is equal to Sy, then we have uniform scaling and it maintains the relative proportions of the object. And if Sx is not equal to Sy, then definitely it will be non-uniform scaling. So you see, uh, with the help of a simple figure, let us see how it looks like the scaling. So, this is the original figure and here Sx is equal to Sy is equal to 1.5. That means each length, each sides of this object will be 1.5 times finally. So, here after scaling Sx is equal to Sy is equal to 1.5, the final object looks like this. It is a bigger object because the scaling is given more than 1. But if the Sx is equal to Sy is equal to 0 0.5, that means we are reducing half for all this uh, length here. You see the final object is this. It is just like half of the original object. 
but Sx and Xy may not be same. But here in this case, we have taken that Sx and Sy are same. And first, firstly, we have taken Sx is equal to Sy 1.5 times. That means this is the final object will be one and a half times of the original object. And secondly, Sx is equal to Sy is 0.5. The final object will be half of the original object. But in this case, the different scaling about x and y axis, that is Sx is equal to 1.5. So Sx, this line becomes half and Sy is 1.5. That means Sy means this line will be 1.5 times of the original length of the object. So this is of course 2D to scaling, but there may be 3D uh, scaling also. So that 3D part we will discuss in our next lecture. Now, let us consider a general transformation matrix. So, T is A, B, C, D. So, here A, B, C, D are elements of this matrix for this transformation matrix T. And let us see that how we can get a very a better result or better representation by considering a transformation matrix for A by taking these four elements A, B, C, D. At any point A, X, Y, so A, into T is equal to X, Y, A, B, C, D. But in this case, let us see, let us take B and C are 0 and D is equal to 1. So finally, here we get A, T, X, Y, A, 0, 0, because diagonal element B, C, we have taken 0, 0, each, and D is 1. So this comes out to be, if we multiply these two matrix X, Y and A, 0, 0 on this matrix. So we are getting A, X, Y. So in this case, you see that the coordinate x is changing, but y is not changing. So this is, of course, scaling in x directions only. So it is clear that x produces a scale change in x component of the position vector. Similarly, if we take b and c is equal to 0, and instead of in the previous case, d is equal to 1, but in this case, if you take a is equal to 1, then the transformation matrix will become 1, 0, 0, d. Finally, we get x, y, d. So in this case, the changes uh, is taking place only in y directions. So y produces scale change in y component. And if a and d both are not equal to 1, then there is a scale change in both the directions. So if a is equal to d is greater than 1, then it is a case of pure enlargement. And if a is equal to d is less than 1, then it is a pure reduction. In scaling, only the diagonal terms are affected. Now, we will talk about the reflection. Reflection is mirroring of an object. So, we can define that reflection is creating a mirror image of an object about any axis. To understand the mechanism of reflection, let us consider the transformation matrix T. Elements are A, B, C, D. So, in this case, this figure uh, depicts about reflection about y-axis. So here this is a final object and one object over here and this is a reflection over here. And in this case the reflection about the x-axis here. So this is the original object and the after reflection we are getting this object. So this is the reflection about x-axis. Now this is the reflection about x and y-axis. So previously it was object over here. So reflection about x-axis it was here. And again, there is reflection about y-axis, so it finally it will come to this point. So we will say reflection about x and y-axis. And this is obviously the reflection about y-axis is equal to x-axis. So reflection about x, y-axis here. Now, let us look into the aspects of reflection in detail with the help of transformation matrix. So, if A and or D are negative, reflection through an x-axis or plane occurs. So, consider B and C is 0 and D is equal to 1 and A is equal to minus 1. So, we get this transformation matrix. So, in this case here, finally we get A into T is equal to minus x, y. And here, obviously, this is the reflection through y-axis. Similarly, if you take A is equal to 1, and d is equal to minus 1, then reflection through x-axis results. If a and d is equal to minus 1, the reflection through original results. So, 
Finally, we get a into t is equal to minus x minus y. In reflection, only diagonal terms are affected. Now, two-dimensional shear. Now, we we know about the shear force. So, suppose there is a book over here, and if you apply a force tangentially, definitely there will be the change in shape of the book, and obviously the coordinates will also change for each and every points of the object. So, this is the case of a shear. As discussed above that in scaling and reflections only the diagonal terms are affected. However, in case of shear transformation, a safe distortion takes place. Obviously, if there is a book or if you take a dictionary and if you uh, apply force tangentially, obviously the safe, there will be safe distortion. Now, x direction shear is given by the following matrix that is 1, 0, 0, s, h, x, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So here we have taken the 3 by 3 matrix and the CR in X direction is given as SHX. And the final coordinate X dust Y dust 1 is equal to original coordinate into the transformation matrix that is 1, 0, 0, SHX 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And <coughs> in Y direction shear is given by the following matrix. So in this case, the transformation matrix for the y direction CR will be 1, S, H, Y, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And finally, we get the expression for the final coordinates of any object which is under shear. That is, X dust Y dust 1 is equal to X, Y, 1 multiplied by the matrix, transformation matrix of the shear that is in S, 1 S H X 0 0 1 0 0 0 1. So here if we multiply this matrix with this matrix so we get finally X X star H S H Y plus Y and 1 and where S H Y produces a shearing along the along that is proportional to X. So here you see that X dust is equal to X Y dust is equal to X star S H Y plus Y and 1 is 1. After discussing all the transformation above, it is important to understand the effect of this transformation on the origin. So, as I had already discussed that when you rotate the body with respect to the origin, we get the simple equations which we have got by little algebra and discussed earlier. But if the uh, object is rotated, not with respect to the origin, then definitely we have to do a lot of transformation and the equations will be different. So here you see that let us talk about the concatenation of transformation. We can look the above discussion transforms in terms of the vectors. So let us talk about the rotation. This expression we had already discussed that an object is rotated with respect to origin. So final coordinate of each end point that is x dash is equal to x cos phi minus y sin phi and y dash is equal to y cos phi plus x sin phi. Here phi is the angle of rotation of the object with respect to the origin. So here we can write in terms of the matrix multiplication that is x dust y dust is equal to x y multiplied this transformation matrix cos phi sin phi minus sin phi cos phi. And when you talk about the scaling, the transformation matrix will be S x 0 0 S y. And now if we want to rotate after scaling, then the following could be done. That is x dash to y dash is equal to x y multiplied by the transformation matrix for rotation and the final coordinate that is x double prime y double prime is equal to x prime y prime. Here we are considering x dash to y dash as the new coordinate after rotation that is s x 0 0 s y. Finally, we get x double dash y double dash is equal to original coordinate that is x y s x 0 0 s y and transformation matrix for the rotation. Here 
we have multiplied the origin coordinate with the transformation matrix of scaling multiplied by the transformation matrix for the rotation. But the same cannot be applied in the case of translation. So here translation as we know that x dash is equal to x plus t x. T x is the transformation in x direction. T y is the transformation in y direction. In this case, 2D space is embedded into 3D space. Also, all the coordinates are expressed in the homogeneous coordinate system. If we consider w is equal to 1, so the 3D vector becomes x, y, 1, then translation is represented by t, that is t x, t y. So, if we write down this in this form for translation, that is x dash y dash 1. So, x dash y dash are the new position or new coordinates for one endpoints. And x y 1, x y is the original endpoints of any object multiplied by the transformation matrix that is 1 0 0 0 1 0 t x t y. But if we multiply the, the two matrix that is x y 1 and 1 0 0 0 1 0 t x t y 1, finally we get the expression for x dash is equal to x plus 1 into t x and y dash is equal to y plus 1 into t y. That is nothing but the expression for the translation in x and y direction respectively. Now, when you talk about the scaling, scaling we can also define that is x dash y dash 1 equal to x y 1 s x 0 0 0 s y 0 0 0 1. But here you see that upper triangle all elements are 0 and lower triangle all elements are also 0. So, in this case which again gives x dash is equal to x s x y dash is equal to y s y and rotation is represented by r q and x dash y dash 1 is equal to x y 1 multiplied by the matrix for rotation cos phi sin phi 0 minus sin phi cos phi 0 0 0 1 which gives finally x dash is equal to x cos phi minus y sin phi and y dash is equal to y cos phi plus x sin phi. So, it is clear that to rotate or scale an object about any point P naught x whose original coordinate is x naught y naught, the following needs to be done. Translation P naught to origin, rotate the object and translate back to P naught. It is something like that when you repair your car that you take the car to the service center and repair it after that you bring back the car in your home. So, when an object is to be rotated but for with respect to other points. So, in that case what we have to do first we have to take that object to the origin and rotate with respect to the origin with the angle the desired angle with which you are interested to rotate that object and after rotating you bring back that object to the original positions. It is same as what I have given a very simple example that if you want to repair your car, you take the car from your home to the service center, repair it and bring back the car to your home. Same thing, if the body or object is to be rotated with respect to any other point, then what we have to do, we have to take that object to the uh, origin, rotate it, after rotating uh, again bring back to the original. So, two type, three transformation you have to do it. First tran transformation, you have to transform that object from original point to the origin, then again second transformation, rotate it and thirdly, third tra final transformation is bring back that object to the original point. So, first one translate P naught to origin, that is t minus x naught minus y naught because if if the object is at x naught y naught if you want to bring back bring it to the origin so definitely that you have to give translation in works directions as well as in y directions that is tx is equal to minus x naught and ty is equal to minus y naught and rotate then translate back to p naught because if you want to bring back the 
object to the original point, you have to give translation in x directions as well as in y directions, you having the translation Tx is equal to x naught plus and Ty is plus y naught. So, here, this is a, uh, the, the, the uh, thing which I have already uh, expressed that is also shown pictorially over here. So, x dash y dash is equal to x y m, where m is equal to transformation that is x naught y naught multiplied by r cube multiplied by t transformation. So, here you see that object was here, but that is p naught x naught y naught. So, first of all this object if you want to rotate it, but if, if we cannot have we cannot use the same expressions which we have discussed and that ex for rotation, the, the expressions which we have derived for rotation for getting the new coordinates for any endpoints of the object, that rotation is with respect to origin. But here this is the point, this is the point, this is not at origin. So, we have to take, we have to give translation first to take this object to the origin. So, we are our translation to origin, we are bringing this object over here. And after that, we have to rotate it. So, this point is coincide with the coinciding with the origin. Now, we have to rotate with the desired angle. So, after rotating, again we have to bring back this object to the original position. So, here that translate back to original positions after rotation. So, here this, this was the original object. We have to bring it to the origin. So, here this point is coinciding with the origin over here. First, translate to origin, then perform rotation. Here we are performing the rotation, and after rotation, it will take this shape. And again, we have to bring back this object to the original positions. So, translate back to origin positions after rotation. So, rotation about point P naught. Now, let us take a very simple example for this, for which the center of the object is not at origin, but some other point. We let, let us take this example and if we understand this problem, then definitely what we have discussed so far will be crystal clear to us. So, example 3, find out the transformation matrix to rotate an object about 90 degree counterclockwise about its center. The center of the object is at 5,3. 5,4. But here, my dear friend, please see that the center of the object is at 5,4. It is not the origin. So, first of all, we have to shift this object to the origin, then rotate it, then again bring back to the original positions. So, the first translate the center of the object to its origin by using transformation matrix. So, this is the transformation matrix. If we want to shift the center of the object to the origin. So, th we have to multiply this, this transformation matrix. Then, the rotation matrix is given as 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So, after putting the value of phi is 90 degree, we get this transformation and then translate back to the original nil center using this. So, the transformation matrix become T is equal to first matrix for Translating it to the origin 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, minus 5, minus 4, 1. Then again, we have to multiply it with the second transformation matrix for rotating this object for 90 degree. After that, we have to bring back this object to the original position. So, finally, we have to multiply it with the third matrix for bringing back the object after rotating 90 degree, keeping that center of that object at origin. Again, we have to bring back to the original position. That is why finally, we have to multiply this third transformation matrix. So, here that in general, we can write down the expression for, 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 for rotating the object with respect to a point P that is coordinate is P comma Q and with some any angle, but in that case, P and Q, we have taken 5 and 4, but, and theta, uh, sorry, and phi, the angle we have taken 90 degree, but we are considering 
any in general expression for that. So, here the final transformation matrix T will be equal to 1 0 0 0 1 0 minus P minus Q 0 cos theta, but here we are rotating with an angle theta, that is why you are writing theta, sin theta 0 minus sin theta cos theta 0 0 0 1 and we are bringing back the object or to the original point PQ, that is why third transformation matrix 1 0 0 0 1 0 PQ 0. Similarly, reflection any arbitrary axis can be accomplished by first translating an object so that the arbitrary axis passes through the origin, then rotating both about the origin till the line is coincident with one of the coordinate axis, then reflect it as it has been explained before and then reverse the procedure bring the arbitrary axis along with the object to its rigid positions as discussed in the above example. Now, let us take a very simple example that find the transformation mat uh, uh, that object on an object point P x y and theta degree about a fixed center of rotation L m. So, it is a very simple case that the we have already discussed about translate it from the po uh, point P to the origin, rotate it and translate back to P to that point and finally, we get this expression that is R theta P 1 0 0 0 1 0 minus L minus M 1. So, this is we are bringing back the object center to the origin and here this matrix is for rotating with angle theta and this is also bringing back to the original position. So, these are all the if we put all these values, so this is the transformation matrix and so far we have discussed about translation, rotation and scaling and shearing also. So, you can again go through the book and you can also solve some more problems and why we have taken this topic because uh, we, we had got the feedback from the students that they are facing problem for understanding the this topic of computer aided design, basics of computer graphics and this definitely this knowledge will, uh, will lead to understand the later part that is 3D translation or 3D graphics. So, in 2D we have considered X and Y coordinate, but when you talk about 2D object like pyramid, cylinder or cube. So, we have to consider the third, third axis and once you understand the 2D problem, then for understanding uh, for 3D problem, problem will not at all be a difficult task because only to you have to add another coordinate system and I hope that you enjoyed with this interactive edited lecture session. So, if you have any queries, anything to be asked, these phone numbers are given, mobile number is also given email is also given. In fact, we are getting so many queries from students from all over India through mail, through phone and we love to answer your queries and your difficulties and we will definitely uh, help you for imparting distance mode of distance education for this BTEC mechanical engineering program. Thank you very much.